Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere, and even earn money, all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then, you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since I discovered Spotify for Podcasters, I feel like I've been having a lot more connection with my listeners through the Q&As and polls. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com forward slash podcasters to get started. A quest is a search for something. And every week, the Quest Podcast will show you how we know what we know through interviews with people that have incredible stories of dedication and perseverance. I'm your host, Todd Fisher. Join me in this thought-provoking and inspiring podcast of discovery. Find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. guys, welcome back to season three of A Catholic's Perspective, the podcast about being a young Catholic surviving in a secular world. Today, I have my producer with me, Todd Fisher, and we're basically just going to do a year-end review. We kind of do one of these every single year during the end of the year, um, just kind of going back over the year, kind of discussing what happened, different changes, um, big events, small events, personal events, etc. So welcome back, Todd. Hi, Amber. Good to be back. Is the year yeah, over already? Been... What? Is the year over already? It, uh, yeah. I am not prepared for 2023, to be honest. I'm still processing 2020. I feel like a lot of people are in the same boat with me right now. I just feel like so much has happened in the last year that I just, I can't even believe it's been a year. It's insane. It's flown by for sure. Yeah. You've had a big year for Definitely. I I was kind of running the stats before the the show. And this has been your biggest year yet. In fact, I think we can just tell everybody all this, but your social media reach is nearly a quarter million people now. That's insane. I know not everyone really sees that because some people just tune into you in a Facebook group or some people just tune into you on Instagram, but Mm -hmm. your total across all platforms, including the podcast is now a quarter million people. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, guys. You guys are the reason I do this. This is awesome. It's interesting to see it too, because I know on Instagram, we have more followers than we do on like YouTube or things like that. But when you really add everything up, like it's incredible how many people we've been able to reach with um, God and everything. It's really fantastic. I was just talking to Father Dan about this because, um, you know, Spotify sent out their wrapped you know stuff this these last couple of weeks and it tells everyone kind of the stats you have for your podcast what music you listen to like everybody gets this for something different and uh and father dan was really impressed with the stats particularly how many countries he reached um now you reached like what 64 countries 68 68 countries yeah crazy yeah uh, between like a third and a half of the world you're in yeah he didn't have near that many, but he's he was like, you know, Todd, he's like, I thought this podcast might flop when I did it. <laughs> he's like that it has this continuous growth is really good. Um, we love Father Dan. And, and what's really interesting is he's been working on like a super secret project that we can't talk about yet. But not yet. Um, but he um, he didn't even record for half the year. So like most of these statistics are based on um, episodes that he put out at the beginning of this year. Because he hasn't wow. had anything out since the su- you know since the beginning of the summer. That's fantastic. Good for him. So yeah, so he was really uh, really impressed by it that uh, he you know he was getting the numbers that he was getting. In fact, he was uh, actually for the spiritual and religious category just for Spotify. Mm-hmm. He was in one of the top ten percent of creators there, which oh, was fantastic. really good. Which which shows how small that particular genre is and of yeah. course the in spotify wrapped is just spotify and of course you know for any of us any of you out there that are listening not everyone listens on spotify so our numbers 
we kind of aggregate from a lot of sources. So, right. you know, your podcast is on maybe 14 or 15 platforms. And I have to tally all those numbers separately. So, you know, <laughs> Google Podcasts has a different set of results that they send me than say, you know, what what Spotify does. Right. So yeah. And Apple has their own numbers that they send. So no, I'm like on Apple, Spotify, Google Play, Amazon, something. Like we're on like a lot of places. Stitcher, I think the radio most... play, all kinds of all kinds of yeah. Shows. I think the most popular one is Spotify. And then after that, it's Apple and then Google Play. Those are like the top three that I've noticed in the statistics. Yeah. Um, also being in the top 5% of religious and spiritual podcasts for this podcast was fantastic to see as well. It is a very small genre. I don't see too many people who have, you know, Catholic podcasts. I mean, there's different religions because I'm sure they kind of, warp all that together you know just religious versus spiritual kind of podcasts but there aren't really that many good catholic podcasts that consistently put out content i've noticed um father dan and i are one of them and then there's a couple others i can't remember their names right now but it's just interesting to see how many people we've been able to reach just through spotify alone you know just through podcasting and yet we're on so many other different platforms that we're able to reach even more people it's really really cool yeah and the original idea was to take what you were already recording for youtube and mm -hmm. turn those into podcasts because we felt like you know people some people would be maybe driving to work or be at the gym on a treadmill and they wouldn't really necessarily be able to watch anything so it would be a nice way to kind of replicate what you did on youtube you know, in an audio format and it's kind of taken on a life of its own. But of course yeah. this year, while we're on the topic of the podcast is, you know, this was season three, we started this year and right. we're at, I think as of this airing, we're at 55 episodes total for all three seasons. Ooh. Wow. That's fantastic. I know 2040. Yeah. Just about. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy how fast time's gone by. It's we're that not near easy. at the amount of videos that you've recorded for YouTube, but you 55 episodes is, is still pretty nice. Yeah, that's still a lot. I think next year we'll probably season four will put us probably around like mm, probably 70. Yeah. If you keep up doing, you know, over 20 a season. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, we, we definitely, uh, you know, from from Amber and I both, I also very much appreciate it because the, producing a podcast like this, you know, you hope that it gets noticed and yeah. um, and it is. So uh, thank you from me as well to all her fans. <laughs> you know, I wanted to compile some things we could talk about for this year in review, you know, maybe talk about what was going on in the news and the yeah. environment, all that. But I looked at all the stuff you did this year and I thought, well, this is the episode right here. So right. I just want to kind of go back and kind of talk about some of the highlights of just things that happened with the religious hippie. And one of the biggest things that you did this year was your website launch. Right. That was really big. That was exciting too, because I think it's one of those platforms where in case, you know, Instagram kicks me off, just like TikTok did or something, all the information you need is on my website at the religious hippie.com. You can see the events I've done past, present, future. You can see the book club information. You can see um, childhood photos of me. And there's just so much information on the website that I felt like I wasn't able to put out on social media. Um, and so I feel like it's really beneficial for people to really know what my mission statement is and who I am. And we've been working together for a while and three years we talked about it every year. We were like, let's build a website. It never happened. Let's build a website. It never happened. And then <laughs> finally we were like, this is getting serious. Like you were really getting some traction and, uh, and we did it. So that launched, so that was a big deal because now, yeah. you know, everything reaches everything as a result of the website. Another big thing that happened, maybe you want to talk about is your rosary drop, how successful yeah, we, that was. Yeah, we had our first limited edition religious hippie rosaries drop this year, and it was fantastic. They're kind of like a white and um, orange color bead. We only had 25 made, and they sold out in two hours. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. that was, we had no idea, you know, if people would be interested in it. And, right. uh, 
you know, and you publicized it, but you just never know, right? If people are going to be interested in something and almost all of them sold out in the first hour. And then we had like two that hung on for that second hour. They were like in people's carts. Yeah. And we were just like shocked that they went that quick. So, um, yeah, it was basically so that was, like that was, we put it up and then I took a shower and then I looked again and they were like gone. And I was like, yeah. oh, OK, not that I take two hour long showers, but and by, by the time this ministry. airs, by the time this episode airs that we're doing now, you will have already had the chaplet drop. So crossing mm-hmm. our fingers, hopefully that has met with the same success. Yeah, the chaplets, the limited edition chaplets, there's only 15 of them um, that we're dropping and it's. I'm just so excited for them. They're really pretty. They're blue and they're for, um, they're dropping on December 8th, which when this podcast come out, you know, obviously it's going to be later, but they're being released on the feast of the immaculate conception. And so they're a blue color and they're white. It's really pretty. Well, let's hope that in the past, when these all sold out, we can now (laughs) say thank you for selling them all out. Right. Thank you guys. (laughs) It's like a weird time warp going on right now. Yeah, I'm talking to myself in the past, but also in the future. Um, that's not all that happened for you this year. You spoke at a whole lot of places. Your first time really going out and speaking, you did Iowa, Colorado, Maryland, and where else were you? Michigan? Did you, um, oh, you went to Wisconsin? Wisconsin. Uh, we had it. So the first talk I did was in Yorkville, Illinois. That was the very first one. And that was for a catechism class. And I just spoke on my testimony and um, mental health. And then after that, I had a talk in Denver, Colorado at SOCA, which is the, um, it was a really fun, basically retreat slash event for young adults. Bishop Strickland spoke there as well as father, uh, father Nolan. I actually got to have dinner with Bishop Strickland. He's a fantastic man, a very holy, pious man. And I got to do a talk on, um, basically traditional Catholicism and my reversion. And then uh, that was a really fun time. I really loved being in Denver. Um, The Catholic community there was just really fantastic. And I got to meet up with my manager, Anthony, um, who also helps out a lot in my ministry. And we got to sightsee. He took me to the Columbine Memorial. He took me to the chapel on the rock where Pope John Paul II uh, walked up the, um, I guess it's, I think it's, um, oh my goodness. I There was a trail there. Yeah, but I'm trying to remember. It was a specific trail. Though. I think it's Stations of the Cross. I think that's what it was. Um, we didn't go up there because it was like really windy, but um, it was still really cool to see. And we took a lot of pictures and things. And then from there, I had a talk in Wisconsin, which was really fun. Um, I had a talk in, oh my goodness, Iowa, a talk in Delaware that one just happened not too long ago I had a talk in I had a couple they were really fun though I really enjoyed the talks with the young um the young kids because they're just so receptive of things and they're they kind of soak things up like little sponges and age range like when I say little kids I should probably say more like teens um and then of course I did some younger kid talks but the teenagers were really receptive of the information in my conversion story. And, and Delaware, uh, well, that was a college. Yes, Delaware was the college, uh, University of Delaware. That's where I spoke. Yeah. It was a really fun time. And I got to meet a lot of young adult Catholics who um, really enjoyed my talk. I talked on mental health, uh, social media, and basically my experience with those things. I was also featured in um, their newspaper, which was The Dialogue. And uh, that was really cool. That was a really fun experience. I love that. It was something we talked about a lot early in the year about you going out and doing speaking and you sort of booked those first small ones on your own Mm -hmm. and then it's just kind of grown. So now that you've kind of had your pilot program, your test of this, are you enjoying it? Are you ready for more next year? Oh yeah, absolutely. I was intimidated at first because I'm a homebody and an introvert. So I like to be home and new places are a little bit intimidating, but the more I've traveled, the more I've gotten used to it. This was my first year ever flying. I've never flown before outside of this year. And so I had to learn to do that on my own. Um, And shockingly, it was really easy. I expected it to be a lot harder. But no, I absolutely love it. And I cannot wait for the speaking events we have lined up for 2023. Yeah, I understand there's maybe two or three that are already 
mm-hmm. you know, getting it books. Works. So that one, I'm excited for those. Those are going to be really cool. I can't announce to, them yet, but yeah. No, no, I don't think the ink's dry on the contracts yet for that, but not yet. Uh, but yeah, it's going to put you in some new parts of the country for sure. So that'll be exciting. Mm-hmm. Plus, I love traveling and just getting to meet people in different states. Like the Catholic communities from state to state are so different. And I'm so used to the Catholics in Chicago that when I go to um, Colorado or somewhere else, the environment is completely different. And um, it's just really cool to see how Catholic communities differ from state to state. Yeah, for sure. For sure. (laughs) You know, we talked about you uh, launched a website, um, but a little later in the year after the website launch, you launched your shop. So let's talk about that. So you put out some limited edition mugs, you Mm -hmm. have some economy rosaries, probably a lot of cool stuff to expect next year. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I was really excited for that. I was trying to decide what would be best to put on the shop for my followers. And I realized that I have a lot of followers who are just getting into Catholicism. They don't have a lot of money to spend on like a $70 rosary. And so the economy rosaries are an affordable way to be able to afford a rosary. Um, And I just, I love them. There's a bunch of different colors and varieties. The mugs are awesome. We actually just put out a religious hippie book club mug, which is awesome. I love that one. Um, that one just launched, uh, actually a couple days ago, but when this podcast comes out, it'll be like a month ago. And those are really fun. I really like that one. Um, we, overall, should give, though, we should give a shout out to the artist, Ariana Victoria. Oh, who we did love the, her. The, who did the cool cartoons. Yeah. So anybody who, who wants to see the other stuff that she does, arianavictoria.com. And um, there's what, maybe four or five mugs that are going to come out in the collection. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, we have a collection basically coming out. And um, the first one was limited edition. Um, And so the other ones we're lining up um, are going to be really fun. I'm really excited for those. I think you guys will like them too. Yeah, yeah. The first one that we put out just came in like a couple of colors, pink, blue, black, I think they... Yeah, but it was, it was the same cartoon on all of them. And then, you know, the new one is the is the book club one. Right, right. Yes. And then the other ones coming out, there'll be a different cartoon of me, but it'll be the same theme, right. um, so to speak. And so it's going to be like a little collection item, which I think is really fun. These are all the Disney hippie line of mugs, right? <laughs> we don't like Disney, but I do look like a Disney princess. That's literally what all of my friends have said. That's funny. They're like, wow, you look like such a Disney princess. And I'm like, oh, that's things. The great. economy line is probably going to expand too, right? Are you going to, ha- will we see economy, you know, prayer books, Bibles? Are we going to see other economy things in the economy line? I definitely want to. I think that would be very beneficial. Um, I definitely also want to make sure that the economy items I'm giving out are also, um, quality and it's really hard to find places that give you bulk quality. Um, but at the moment I'm, I'm working on that for sure. That's definitely in the works. What else can we expect from the shop next year? Anything you can tease or ideas for (laughs) stuff that you want to do? I really want to do t-shirts and I really want to put out maybe um, like some tumblers or something. I can't exactly say yet because I'm still kind of deciding on certain things, but shirts and sweatshirts are definitely something that I want to lean towards. I already feel my blood pressure raising. (laughs) Todd's like, don't make me do this, please. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah, they're difficult, but if we start on it now... We'll see, we'll see how it goes. I can't really promise anything, but um, definitely a lot more merch I hope to put on the store in the next coming year. And with how successful the store has been, um, it's been able to support the ministry so that I'm able to do this because between being a full-time college student and trying to run a ministry and babysitting and everything else in between, if um it's it can be really hard trying to continue doing something um when yeah. you don't have the funds for it and so that's why donations are just so wonderful being able to afford new equipment and make quality items right. and things. Yeah. you know that's one of the trickiest things with things like this you know i have a, a nonprofit company myself and and uh, i think sometimes when people see 
someone or something, a project being successful, they think it's a, it's a sellout move. They think that you're making all of this money, but as the infrastructure grows, it's harder to support that. So everything you're putting out there, all the mugs, the economy rosaries, you know, there's a slim profit margin that happens there. And with that profit margin, we have to use it to make other things and grow your ministry because the bigger we can grow the ministry, the more things that you can offer as services or products, the more people you can reach. Exactly. And, it's a, it's a trade. And, and, that's, um, and this actually circles back to something I was saying earlier with father Dan's podcast is that I was kind of telling him, you know, the podcast is about, you know, kind of putting butts in the seats in a way mm -hmm. because he knows being at church, it's butts in the pews, right? Like that's, you got what you have to do. You want to fill the church up. But with a podcast, we have the ability to reach far more people. Right. And um, that's such a valuable service. And with you, I said earlier, as we open this uh, episode, you have a you know quarter million people across all your social media. For To me, that's butts in the seats. Those are people that are listening to what you're saying and a message you're delivering. And that gets expensive. You know, Zoom costs money and the infrastructure for the website and all those things cost money. So when people buy it, just something as simple as a mug, you don't know how great that of a, of a thing that is that you can support this and, and let it grow. Exactly. And I do, I, I really do appreciate everyone who's either donated or has bought something off of my shop because it really goes a long way being able to continue doing this ministry and reach more people and reaching people in 68 different countries, apparently. Um, and it's just really fantastic. But the issue is that I am a young adult and I, I, you know, doing things full time can be very difficult when, um, you know, the, the ministry costs money and I put my own money into it. Um, and so it's very helpful when we do get donations and things because it, it helps grow the ministry and it helps me be able to continue doing the ministry as I, I continue college and things. That's right. I make mm -hmm. uh, $68,000 a year working for the religious hippies. So we need the donations <laughs> to keep coming in to pay my salary. I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I do this for free, folks. <laughs> this is volunteer work. <laughs> Maybe it'll get you some time out of purgatory. <laughs> I don't even have a mug. <laughs> I should send you one for Christmas, like I, I got did a, with the t-shirt. I got a really terrible t-shirt last year. It said "World's <laughs> Greatest Producer." <laughs> it doesn't this, even fit you. This t-shirt is your endorsed. Museum. Yeah, this this t-shirt is endorsed by the religious hippie. It said on the back. <laughs> And she sent me like a, a size medium. I'm a six foot two guy. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I actually didn't want you to wear it, but at least it'll be able to be in your uh, museum one in day. The museum of time. That. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Too funny. Too funny. <sighs> um, but you know, speaking of of you know, kind of like us working together, we met this year to work on a super secret project. We, we won't talk about it in this episode, but we will probably be talking about it sometime here in the spring of the year. I'm very excited for that. I think you guys are going to be really happy with it. It is huge. Yeah. Like whatever you think you've seen Amber do up to now, this super secret project is by far the biggest thing yet. I'm going to learn how to daredevil flip over the Grand Canyon, guys. <laughs> Even no, a bigger kidding. fib than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, people, I, I can dream. I can dream, Todd. <laughs> but yeah, so that was fun. We're like three quarters of the way through the super secret project. We still have a little bit more work to do on it. Yeah, we have um, to schedule that in. But overall, but, it's coming along very nicely. But it will be a huge announcement. Probably late winter, early spring, we'll be announcing that. So we have make been sure working on some really big, big things in the background. Yeah, make sure that you're signed up for my newsletter so you can stay on top of those big announcements. That's really helpful. What can noticed... we... Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, <laughs> you go first. <laughs> what else can we expect from the Religious Hippie in 2023? A lot more talks. I'm hoping to eventually, I don't know if this is going to happen in 2023, but eventually I would like to go abroad and do talks um, outside of the United States. That would be really exciting. Um, obviously more things on my platforms. I also kind of want to revamp my YouTube channel a little bit more. I, um, I kind of want to do longer videos and 
I want to be more into the apologetics of things. I feel like I covered most of my own personal stories for the most part. And so the apologetic side of Catholicism, I'm leaning more towards. Um, and besides that, just, um, oh, there's a few things actually. Um, hmm. You know, um, we launched the book club this year, which is something we should talk about because that's been, you know, a, we're a couple months into that. That's true. We're about three. This is the third month. Well, yeah. when this comes out, it'll be the fourth month. The book club was a wonderful idea because of the fact that, you know, we don't have a lot of Catholic communities where we're at. At, at least my friends have told me that who live in different states, whereas I do have a Catholic community that's fairly good. So I figured I could take that Catholic community and put it online and we could have a religious hippie book club where we discuss books, Catholic books. And the first book we read was um, The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis, technically not Catholic, um, but that was a huge hit. Everybody loved that one. The second book we just finished reading was Fighting for Life by Lila Rose. That's a pro-life book. That one was fantastic. We had a lot of good conversations out of that one about being pro-life. Uh, Father Dan loved that book. I remember he, he gushed about it for like weeks. It was great. Um, and then in December, uh, we're reading The Imitation of Christ. So that's really exciting. That's my favorite book. If you guys have been following me since the beginning, I talk about it consistently. Um, and so overall, it's just been really wonderful getting to know people from all different parts of the world. Different countries have joined us on Zoom. And we have these really deep discussions and we just kind of have a community on there. And it's, I think it's something that a lot of people benefit from. Yeah. And we, and that goes uh, through March of next mm -hmm. year. So it's still going when this, when this podcast come out, we still have it. You guys can if sign you up. If you haven't on my joined website. it, then, you know, pick up joining another month and another book and, yeah. and try it out. Signups are between the first and the seventh of every month. So make sure you sign up. Yeah. So that was big. So looking back on this on 2022, this has been a really productive year. <laughs> it really has been. And, you know, there's been so much that has happened, but at the end of the day, I'm just like so grateful that um, the ministry is still alive and well, you know, and is still reaching more people than ever, because that's all I really ever wanted was to reach people who have fallen away from the faith or who are curious about the faith. Um, share my own testimony and hopefully help them with any kind of reserves they have about Catholicism or misunderstandings and misconceptions. I know you've kind of gotten a crash course in running a business this year. <laughs> yeah. Thanks we, to you. We had a conversation about it early in the year about whether, you know, you want to take this bigger. Yeah. And, uh, and I remember one of the first things I had you do was to put a giant wall calendar up. Yes. And I was it's like, we need at least 18 months. And you were like, why 18? You really fought me on it. Uh huh. And now you like, totally why understand so why. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I'm a slow learner, guys. It takes me a little well, while. Well, you know, it's you have to because you, you know, you can't plan anything for tomorrow, right? Like you're planning right. quarters and quarters out. So this shows you what, you know, I think the, the people listening can understand, like, you know, what's going to come out 18 months from now. Exactly. That's what's really brilliant about all this is the stuff that's planned out so far in advance that you all will be just, uh, you know, completely dazzled by. So and it's just, just and it guarantees that there will be content because mm -hmm. I remember when I first started all of this, it was all over the place. And you taught me about organization and scheduling and how to make sure we put stuff out on time. And then from there, we did get the calendar. And we've just been able to plan things well in advance to make sure that the ministry continues reaching people and we continue putting out content and, um, you know, merchandise and stuff. Yeah. So I wish you all could see the calendar because it's pretty impressive, but uh, yeah. you have to wait and see and just know that there's lots of cool stuff uh, waiting to come out, things you've not heard of yet that are going to really uh, be amazing. Yeah, I'm really excited for a lot of it. And I know I can't talk about it yet, but... I am very excited for all of it. Yeah. Well, I don't really have anything else. I just wanted to kind of, you know, go over the broad strokes here, but it's been uh, really a, just a miraculous year and uh, just you know, so much. So like if one of those things had come out, if you only did the book club, 
it would have been, you know, interesting and fun, but you did a lot of stuff, got a lot of stuff out. It's been a lot, just like recapping, um, traveling by myself, going to places by myself to do talks. We launched the website. We launched the shop. Um, we put the book club out. We launched our first limited edition religious hippie rosaries, the chaplets. Um, it's just insane to me how blessed the ministry is, you know, and God just continues to provide. And of course, through your help, Todd and Anthony's and the help of my team, it's just been a wonderful time growing this ministry. And I hope it continues growing. Because and your I, girl, your girl talk co-host, Chloe, let's throw her in there too. Well, I thought that's, oh, sorry. My alarm almost went off. <laughs> Drew, yes, I love her. And she's been a huge help with the organizational process and doing the Girl Talk episodes with me. We're best friends. If you guys haven't listened to the Girl Talk episodes, even if you're a man, even Todd has to listen to them because he has to edit them. <laughs> <laughs> Although he sometimes for sure skips through them. <laughs> yeah. um, I still highly suggest them because I think you guys can learn a lot about women. Right. And how crazy we are. <laughs> uh-huh. Exactly. And a, and a special but, thanks to anyone who's been a guest on these episodes. We, you know, we couldn't have done it without you. You're part of this too. Oh yeah. We've had amazing guests. Yeah. I, I love each and every guest that comes on the show. They give their time and their effort to share Catholicism or their own story or the pro-life story. And I just really appreciate them taking the time out of their busy schedules to come on my podcast and share it with my, my listeners. It's been great. Yeah. Well, that's all I've got. You want to do this again next year in December? Yeah, let's do it. This is going to be so fun. <laughs> it's, I can't, I can't even imagine what next year is going to hold, but I'm very excited for it. Yeah. So. All right. Well, I'll let you take it out. All right, guys, with all of that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this year end review and just stay tuned for the stuff coming up. Remember to sign up for my newsletter on my website at thereligioushippie.com so you can stay up to date with all of the changes going on and any limited edition drops or merch we have. With all that being said, I hope you guys have a great new year. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Happy New Year. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to A Catholic's Perspective with me, The Religious Hippie. Make sure to visit my official website at thereligioushippie.com, and while you're there, be sure to sign up for my newsletter to keep up to date with my latest news and offerings. You can also find me on virtually any social media site as The Religious Hippie. Thanks for listening! Hi, I'm Father Daniel DePlantis, a Catholic priest, martial artist, and host of the Karate Priest Podcast. Have you ever wondered what the church teaches about different topics? Are you a martial arts enthusiast or just someone who wants to learn more about martial arts? I'd like to invite you to join me and many guests on my podcast as we cover topics of faith, everyday living, and martial arts on the Karate Priest Podcast. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Please be sure to rate and review this episode. This podcast is produced by Todd Fisher and Anthony Smith and is distributed by Metacortex Publishing. This podcast is copyright. Any previously trademarked or copyright content is used by permission. Information and opinions stated in this podcast should not be construed as medical advice. Please be sure and visit the official website for Metacortex Publishing at metacortexpublishing.com or find us on social media for other unique content.